Hello everyone, we're in some hilly fields today, um, not too bad once we get out of this one, easy enough manage after this, uh, this is our second job today, um, the other one there was 100 odd bales in it and this one probably 150 odd. Uh, you will have seen this place already, as um, in an earlier video there I was spreading fertilizer here. So that's how you will have seen it. Uh, I actually ran out of fertilizer in the course of that. And this field and the field I've already bailed outside there never got any fertilizer. So you'll see that. Um, you'll see the difference the fertilizer makes because the crops below are quite heavy. Uh, we're getting the odd shower coming in off the Atlantic here. And it's, uh, look, we're not getting much. So you can see the tops of the mud guards are barely wet, but it's still, it's, sort of annoying at the same time we could do without it and um, we could do with having the grass as dry as possible but um, anyway we're tipping away nicely and um, the class rake will probably be on short leg because the pottinger raked this but he had to go to another job so we'll finish raking this with the class and they probably aren't very far behind me drawing them either so I'll give you a small update there again shortly when um, when they come on drawing and as you can see here the difference the fertilizer makes is uh, an awful lot. We're probably tripling the yield per acre. Um, I haven't calculated it up. I'm not dead sure on field sizes but I'd say there's three times as much grass in these rows as the rows above. Um, you have the field below us, you have two more there, and uh, I'd say they're probably heavier than this one as well. But um, you'd also notice how green and how waste the grass is compared to the stuff above in the other fields. So um, I'm tipping away at this, it's slow enough going in, in the hills because it's the background and they have mapping the safe place and all that kind of carry on. But, uh, get through it and do enough. Um, I'll be head cover off of this because I had the TM on the baler there. I have been baling twice since I've last updated you really but um, due to being busy and not really getting time to do editing or filming and um, that's why you haven't seen as much of me as I would like but anyway um, we were using the TM on the baler because this was on the hedge cutter and seeing as I had a bit to do I said I'd stick off the hedge cutter and, and stick this back on the baler for the, the couple of days so um, next week again now we'll be back hedge cutting and um, we'll be tearing the way through it we'll be making an impression the whole time and getting there slowly but surely but um, Anyway, a lot of people are asking why this on the hedge cutter and why not the TM. Um, this is an awful lot nicer on the hedge cutter because of the vario box. You can vary your speed easily. You have no clutching or braking or anything really. So that's why. That's why this is on the, the hedge cutter. And um, that's why I don't use the TM. Well, as you can see there, there's another shower coming in. But you'll often see that follow the hills, they don't, uh, that mightn't come here, that might just stay going over that way. So hopefully, um, I'll be optimistic enough we're not going to get it, because over that direction doesn't look too bad. So, like I say, you'd often see that follow the hill and we don't get them. Um, this is very heavy, very, very heavy. I haven't the auto tape on because it's just too hilly for that um, but this field of it is very heavy so we have what have we we've 40 odd made there now on this field so far and I think there's about five acres in it so probably have another 15 20 maybe um, other than that we're tipping away nicely through it he's there drawn with the Volvo now so I'll probably show you that even though you've seen it and um, I'll stay motor in the way. It's um, the grass was tethered, but it's a bit wet. So 
slightly wet grass it's easier to pick up than dry grass um, it flows a bit better but um, anyway I will um, when he's down here again with the ball ball I'll probably give you a bit of an update and you'll see what he's at so as you can see there the rain has passed um, like I was saying, you'll often see that as you go along the hill, it mightn't actually make it as far as you. And luckily today, it followed that hill, opposed to following the one behind us. Um, looking at the videos, watching them all along, you probably know that there's been a few different types of net up in the baler. Um, you would have missed one type of net because it was before we were doing the videos. It was on the field from one. Um, Green cap, I think was the name of it and it wasn't a bad knit in fairness um, used a good bit of that then we were using the Bolac um, not massively impressed with the Bolac this year to be fair um, it has a red strand in it and the red strand seemed to be coming off and wrapping around the green roller on the baler there and uh, not that it gave any massive trouble, but still, it, like it's it's been marketed as a kind of a premium product, and for the price of it, you would want to be not getting off looking at it. That net we have on there now that comes from um, Shields Agri, I think they're called. Um, it's their own brand of net, I think. Um, it's been so far so good, in fairness. Um, no complaints about it so far. It's actually a bit wider as well and it covers the bale nicely it's 1.25 opposed to most most brands are 1.23 so I'm happy with that um, probably get more of it going into next year seems to be good enough on it in fairness uh, so yeah I'd be fairly happy um, we're using green plastic today which wouldn't be massively used uh, you'd be using bits and pieces of it but not much I actually like it it gives very little trouble seems fairly strong um, drawing it there it seems hard enough to tear it and stuff opposed to some of the plastics there seems to be a massive variation in plastic some plastic is very hard not to tear it and other plastic is hard enough to tear it so even there seems to be variations between the brands, or not between the brands, but between batches. You could get some of it, it could be very good, and you could get more of it, and it might be great. But over the years I've gone on fairly well with that silotite stuff, and we've tried all various different types of plastic. Um, we were even only on about it there earlier on. We tried clear plastic here maybe five or six years ago and it seemed fine it, it, I don't think it gave too much trouble but um, anyway that's enough about plastic in this that's what we're using and we're getting on fairly well with them at the moment so I'll talk to you soon when the boys are here they're still not in this field they're in the fields up further the rake is there he's up there somewhere drawing them so when we're all in close proximity I'll give you a bit of an up just in the last three or four strokes here now um, we're down to one roll of plastic so there'll be a bit of beeping here unfortunately um, anyway what I was going saying is um, when I get home I'm going to run a bale of straw through the baler because this stuff is very sappy and uh, if the baler was packed for any few days at all it would make it very rusty and stuff inside in the chamber so a local lad gave me a bale of straw and um, I'll just run it through the baler this time of the year you know if the baler's parked for a few days it gets very rusty and the pick up and inside and it so that's what I'll be doing with that once I get home and I'll probably come up here drawn afterwards then because there is a good few here so uh, that's my final update and I will be talking to you probably tomorrow or the day after